service to us is? I put it on the front page of here. Explain. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Put it on. Something we need to have them do. I don't think we're ever going to make it roll. Do you want to keep it down? Hello. 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 Welcome.
Это не субъемный. Did you look at that? No. Okay. No, no, I did. I did. One, one, one thing I would like to do is uh, I want to make copies. I want to make uh, a uh, road log of all the roads that are in well graded. Okay. And it's, uh, it's in here, so one day I'm going to come in and just copy it. Just so that yeah. I want to keep the log. So when somebody says, hey, you know, no, when was the last time you had graded Old Pound Road? Yeah. And I can say, well, it was graded two, three weeks ago. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> Did at one point kind of try to get to office to when the bill came in to graph it out like that. But it was, I can write it down. Yeah, it's just, it, yeah. Well, I'd started to set up an Excel spreadsheet yeah. you know, and then trying to get it to go into sync with the billing well, process became a bit of an issue because. Yeah, I can imagine. But well, I, let's I, say 20% of it doesn't fit into what you've set up. Exactly. Because it's a spur of the moment yeah. oddity. Yeah. yeah. But if I do it every week, yeah. you know I can keep Yeah. Because okay. the roads are probably going to be in it anyway. Yeah. Okay. Too young to be able to drink. <laughs> they still spent my money. Suck me into that? No, no. The camera has seven inches. You want to make sure you get her when she turns. He's got the lens on. He's got the right lens on. I got the round corner. I'm going to be staring at the, the fish eye. Yeah, the round corner. Yeah. At the green chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tilt zoom. You got that going on. Oh, God. Oh, my word. <clears throat> Since we opened at four o'clock, we basically had a um, did the evaluation of yeah. uh, yeah. zoning and fire chief. Oh, yeah. You want to announce it? We Yeah, I'll just open them up one at a time and just keep them on the front page of the special. Uh, and we also set up a, a work session for 
because we don't have a meeting next week on the 25th, but we're having a work session starting at 4.30. At what time? 4.30. Okay. Uh, and we're going to be discussing the procurement and uh, summer road contract concerns, yes. meshing the two together. Okay. Um, and uh, anything else that comes before the board okay. might get discussed more tonight. I don't know if this is our duty right now. Oh, this is the one you were talking about? I think that's up to him. Yeah, okay. Yes. Is that um, down here? Yeah. yeah. Is that, um, it, it, I guess it's about to show the phone. Snowfall? Take a look at it. Yeah. He said yeah, yeah. it happens. All the time. Quite a few years. Yeah. Oh, I didn't say it. I just wrote it down. Mm -hmm. okay. You all set for the action in the mail and all that Yep. What's yeah. that? I, 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 I got it. You still? Yeah. Yeah, no rush. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do Dave first, so he can get out of here. Mm -hmm. I was going to suggest that. Good call. Are you going to get lots in the clock? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're a little ahead because we were able to look over some stuff. Right. You know, you know, it's pretty bad. Yeah, you got your glasses on. <laughs> and it doesn't work. Yeah. You had to add that, right? <laughs> coming and I'm trying to establish a new habit so before we go any further I'm just going to go over a rough thing of what we have. We have a little list in the front of each folder in the action folder this week we had uh, um, a proposal for some electrical changes to the, off the police office outback, uh, a memo from uh, road concerns filed by town residents and a uh, uh, notification from Primex of the possibility of having a file or claim filed. And under signatures, uh, one intent to cut our normal regular minutes, which we'll do in a minute, a uh, non-public session that they weren't sealed. Um, sign an agreement with the uh, people that do our mortgage searching on, uh, I think it's primarily privacy concerns. And uh, we are looking at, but it got pulled out of this week, the traffic control and construction work guidelines presented by the police department because I noticed an error in it and we'll be taking that up next week. And in the mail folder we had from a, a citizen in town of, of septic concern, um, we have a, a notice of a merger, um, a lot, lot merger in town and a notice to all tax collectors uh, information from the state of New Hampshire to our tax collectors. So that's what was in there. Um, we did have, I'll do the minutes first, we had, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of the non-public meeting that we had on April 11th. A second. All right, I have a second, and uh, any discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. And then we, I'll make a motion that we accept the regular minutes of our regular meeting of April 11th as presented. Second. Second. From John. Uh, any discussion, Lenny? No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the manifest this week was $32,575.85. I make a motion that we accept the manifest as presented. Second. All right. I have a second from John. Lenny? No discussion. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, normally, I, we run into public comment, but we do have a, a Mr. Ekman here from Ekman Engineering. I will say, if somebody has a time constraint and they really need to bring up their public comment right now, I'm more than happy to entertain it, but I'm sort of trying to let a working man get back home. So uh, if please feel free to stay. That I, I want to get home to eat dinner. I'd like to say my piece now, but otherwise, uh, we'll give the floor to Mr. Ekman. Actually, I guess more or less I'd start by asking, you know, what your questions were. I, I know what, or, or what. Oh, well, uh, first one I would have is uh, we were trying to get core sampling done on the other side of the Granite Road. Okay, very good. And that is when that's happening. Um, we also, I think we were informed that we're going to go ahead and use you as the engineer for the Snow Road Bridge. Okay, great. All right, um, and what your proposed schedule is on that. Okay. Um, um, and uh, the, the only other issue, yeah. th there is no other particular issue at this time. Okay. I didn't know if there was any discussion on the type of bridge or anything more. On well, that. we can, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, um, where we are is, you know. The, What's the Granite Road one first? Because oh, that's a little one. The Granite Road one? Yeah. Uh, actually, where I was on that, <clears throat> um, I was actually going to go out and check to see if you had bedrock underneath those existing right. apartments. And we... we did well on one side. Yeah. We know it's there. The other yeah. side they couldn't get to. Right. But I, I was going to try to work from the river first if I could. Okay. Rather than have them, you know, come all the way so back. So you think you could gather enough well, I just want to try. Yeah, okay. So there's a slide hammer device that you drive a rod into the ground. Right. And you can hit that rock and you don't. Okay. If you do, you know, you give us a pretty good indicator. Right. It's Acceptable engineering mm -hmm. practice to do yes. it that way? Yeah. If okay. it's there, it's there. It's so in one sense is that if you say there's bedrock and we design a bridge based upon the fact that there's bedrock and there isn't, it becomes your problem, not well, ours. Well, yeah, and you yeah. would know when you start digging, too. I mean, well, well, you know, this is, anyway, you do subsurface, you drill a hole. Okay. I'm willing to save money here, so. Yeah, yeah no, I can save at least $2,000. Yeah, so okay. It sounds good. I think it's worth it. But as long as you find it an acceptable practice to do it that way, and yeah. if you... If your evaluation was wrong, we're not held to fault because your evaluation right. was wrong. Okay. Right. Cool. And, and we do design conservatively too. Yeah. Okay. Well, but, yeah. but I mean, I just wanted to like, look at it and see what was there. We already know what's on the other side. Yeah. And good so news. That's and, good and news. One assumes there's bedrock on the other side. Yeah. And our our intent them. originally was we yeah. tried to get them to get to two places at once, yeah. and it didn't quite work yeah, out. They, they got. Yeah. Well, they did actually. They just didn't get to the yeah. other side. I, I, so. No, I have no concern over the process by which it is. Just when we can get the information so that we can start considering right. what we need to design. Yeah. Okay. And, right. and do I speak to you guys, or do I want to speak to the? Um, well, if they have a particular question. Yeah. Well, okay. I, yeah. I feel like I'm we, we are kind of the person, the people that go ahead and do this. I'm trying to think right okay. now, at the top of my head, uh, the amount of money that we raised to do the construction on Snow Road Bridge. And you had a couple of different options in there. Yeah. I and I think the one we went for was the one where we were driving in. Uh, the wing walls were essentially steel plate. Option two, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah option two. I have a copy of it. Actually, I've got a couple of things I could just hand you real quick. It's been a little bit since I looked at them. So All right, but yeah, so where granite was is, again, we, were, we had the moorings, we know this bedrock on one side, for sure, certain, and we were just going to, it was trying to do a manual method that saves yep. time. I am working on a project up in Conway on Route 16, yep. so I'm up there once a week or so, okay. so I can, eventually I'll time it so I can stop by. Okay. Unfortunately, I apologize, that's why I was 10 minutes late yep. today, right. but I'm um, going a little later, but um, anyway, so I'll be able to look at that granite sometimes. Okay. Uh, now, as far as snow road, we've done an existing condition survey. Yeah. And it wasn't perfect because it was snow. It was pretty big. Right. But, and it's what we wanted. Yeah. So that has gone to the wetland scientist who's going to tie his flags. Right. Then we'll come back and shoot the flags mm -hmm. and get any supplemental information like around the shore. Right. You know, where it was hard to get at yeah. in the winter. So that's, that's the existing conditions plan. Yeah. Um, and then the next step is the design, preliminary design. Yeah. Which we will use to get the permit from the wetland bureau. Right. Depend, depending on which option you go with. Yeah. Um, there were three options that we looked at. 
One of them is more of a, it's like a Hail Mary if your bridge gets closed. Yeah. And we do use it. Right. But it's just putting a, a deck that trans carries the load in there, sort of an emergency. Get repair. it up so you can raise the load <clears throat> and do it right. Yeah. yeah. It's a long-term temporary kind of bridge. Right. Though. And we've done that in a few towns. That's okay. a temporary, temporary permanent. I call it temporary permanent because okay. it'll last a long time. If what you're doing is you're putting a high performance concrete deck with green rebar, which is epoxy coated, right. so it doesn't rust or corrode, and you're just putting a slab on top of everything. Yeah. That makes your problem go away and carries the trucks across. Yeah. It's an Olympic size back burner. Is what it yeah, is. yeah, and um, we've done that in multiple towns. Usually metal plates, DOT comes in and says your thread's rusted out, bridge is going to collapse, close it. Right. And the town says, oh my gosh. In your, we had this in another town, the dump was on the other side, if right. believe it or not. You got snow road, you're in a similar spot, but it's not closed yet. Yeah. So, you know, in an emergency basis, you can put this down pretty quick. Right. So we did one of those in Nelson and one in Ackworth, New Hampshire. Right. And, you know, they'll be hunted for a long time. The, the concrete will last, theoretically, it's a hundred year life. Right. The question is what happens underneath as the what metal deteriorates. The it deteriorates, rusts so away. So just got a concrete you know, mess. And I always kind of kind of joke, if that's all they can afford, this isn't really a joke, they could actually dig out underneath a slab and pour a footing and a, an abutment under it. Right. <clears throat> Just let the rest but Essentially, as far as the actual driving surface of the bridge that we're looking at, well, it's essentially the same kind of deck, except we're doing the footing work prior... We're not just yeah, yeah. No, the ideal situation is to go ahead and do your footings right. first. Yeah. And, and that's what, the second option was, was basically, and because yours is a floodplain, yeah. so you don't have high velocity, yeah. okay? Some bridges, you know, over streams that have boulders the size of Volkswagens that are tumbling down. Right. And you go, you know, six feet below stream bottom with a footing. Right. Okay. In your case, and I, I kind of think it's a good choice, the middle option was basically do footings, yeah. but then, you know, drive some sheets. Yeah. Now, if you scour, don't, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. talk, if you don't do the sheets yeah. and you go six feet below stream bottom, the way that soil is, the water's going to keep gushing in. The right. contractor's going to have a hard time. They're going to drive the sheets anyway. Right. And, you know, they could charge you eighty, hundred thousand dollars just for the protection to get mm -hmm. down that distance. Right. And it's just harder to build. So, so maybe, you know, it might be an extra hundred right. thousand if you did the full depth, which my reasoning for not requiring that as an engineer yeah, is because good. you don't have those high velocities. Right. You have a flood kind of condition in the field. Right. Where you don't have big boulders moving. You have a little bit of velocity, but not nothing that's going to... No. Now, and the other thing is we're going to open this bridge up. All those pipes are going to be gone. That's the I think nice there's... Part. What is there? 24 feet or so that'll be opened right. up. To the West Beaver problem, a whole bunch yeah, of Yeah, it's going to be wide open, yeah. and it's not going to scour it. Right. You know? yeah. So we're going to reduce the scour potential by a lot. Yeah. And again, we don't have that high velocity stream with the big boulders yeah. kind of thing. Well, I mean, it, the existing system we've had, there hasn't been a terrific problem with scouring. We did lose a couple of the, sort of the, uh, the stones that were in there right. over the course yeah. of all. But you can imagine when, it's, open, when it's opened up, it's going to be yeah. completely open underneath yeah. it. So it'll... You know, yeah. So, I, so that, that's the, so the second option is the one that if yeah. you can do the new bridge, that's what I'd recommend. That's yeah. the most economical. You know, and it's a permanent and you, and structure. You were, that's the one you mentioned. You referenced the town when you came up to town meeting, and you yeah. said, you know, you're looking at 100 years, 50 years. It's brand new, you know, brand new high performance concrete. Right. It's it's amazing today. The product is really good. Right. You know, there's micro pores that the moisture can't get inside it, yeah. and with the epoxy coated rebar, it's not going to rust. Yeah. You know, rebar expands ten times when it rusts. So if you, if you, you know, the old one-way slabs they did, they just use regular black bar, right. and the salt would get to it, expand it ten times, it pops the concrete, right. and you end up with a mess. Okay. Today they use epoxy coated bars, which protect it. Plus, right. the concrete is way better. Right. And um, you know, we always recommend the high performance concrete. Yeah. You'll get ridiculous strengths too, like five or six thousand psi. We only need four. But because it's just good, good product. Yeah, I mean overall, the, the second option I always like primarily because I mean I think they all did. They opened up what was underneath. Yeah, it's going to open everything yeah. up, and you'll have the other thing is it's very easy to construct. Yeah. And you start building your footing. You, you know, you basically put in a little bit of a sheet yeah. metal protection, build your footing. You know, you're, you're above the water table with the actual footing, but the sheets go down below. Yep. Not that you'd ever need the sheets, but the sheets are there for scour protection if it ever did. Okay, um, just real, any concept of what the downtime will be on the road? Well, we, we can talk. There's two different options, and we can do both options. Right. One of them is we, we pour, I, I prefer to pour the footings and stem walls, at least, in abutments. Right. And then, I mean, we just did a bridge in Bradford that it took them two weeks. It was a week to do the work, basically, and a week to cure it. Right. Um, that might that was a really experienced contractor. You could add another week for safety. Right. But pouring the deck can take like two.
two to three weeks, probably three weeks for a deck. Okay. Or that's a good contractor. Right. So if you pour the deck in place, it might be more cost effective if you get an experienced bridge guy. Right. The other option is you can pour the, the footings and stem walls right. and then set precast on for the deck. Right. But you still have to overload it. All right. So, so now when you say if an experienced contractor, this is a fairly small job in a moderately out of the way place. So the, uh, it's more of a question of, of course, it's price. Right. Somebody's going to bid. Well, what I'm it. saying is, I could actually bid it, and I offered to. I can bid it two ways with, with precast or port in place. Right. I like the port in place bridges. We just did another one in Ackworth. We did a second bridge for them. And, right. um, we got out there. The water was a little high, and they were worried about the sheets. We made the bridge two feet longer at no charge to the town right. because the contractor wanted two extra feet, make it easier for him. Right. So, in other words, because it was port in place, you can do what you want. Right. That was. I said, sorry. Right. So, which one keeps the road close? Well, back. probably the precast, would, would, because it's already going to be made a priori right. before you close the road. Right. So you pour the footings, the abutments, and then you drop the precast on. Okay. Now, you still have to pour an overlay on it that cures. Right. So you still lose a little bit, but that's probably a little bit faster. So when you start doing the with the abutments and stuff, the road is closed during that? The road is closed during that time. All right. So now you're looking, you said about a week for that to cure before you start putting the stuff on top. Yeah. Now you're throwing the other thing of pouring on top, so you're still looking at two to three weeks, closer to yeah, three, to be okay. yeah. frank, right? Yeah. And there's another option in that you could use a, a you know an arch structure. Right. Like I said, I'm flexible. I'll do whatever you guys Well, want. we're flexible up to the... It's cost. It's dollars. Cost. So we're looking for the. We, we have X amount of money to play with. Yeah, but I also want to. I want to keep the integrity. I mean, I, it, right. I like. I like the port in place structure. You no, know, I, I kind of go with that. I mean, if we're going to close the, if we, if it's going to be closed for three weeks, right. If we go with, why don't we just bite the bullet and just get. Do it right. Do it right. I mean, I, I mean the it, best it, job with the money we have available. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I, I don't see the. Right. Why why are we rushing something that we don't? Well, I don't look at this as yeah. a rush. It's just to just try to make sure we the three caps would be asked the question more money. Yeah, yeah it, it does. You get cranes and things involved. Yeah, right. You know, guys that build bridges. I mean, literally seven days they can have the whole right. whole deck formed and poured, or they can have so to a this size project in the town of Effingham, New Hampshire. When it goes out to bid, and I understand this is a personal evaluation of the existing yep. market. Um, yeah. But do you feel moderately certain that we'll get legitimate bids on that? Oh yeah, yeah, they're definitely gonna get legitimate bridge. I was trying to look, see what I if I written in. I just want to see where I was um, for option two. Um, you know, we were we were saying uh, one fifty to two hundred, mm -hmm. in that range. And again, I've seen them go cheaper. I've seen them go a little more. Right. But that's okay. that's based on probably twenty five bridges, thirty bridges. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. But again, if there's timing, like if you if you bid it at the absolute worst time of year when things are really busy, they're going to throw higher yeah. numbers. Right. Um, you know, we got pretty good numbers on a couple that we just had built. Right. But we did bid them, you know, in the fall, right. early for January ish. And what they did honestly is they bring rides back early too. Yeah. So there's a layoff thing going on. They want to get them back quick before they get hired by another construction company. Gotcha. Because there's a shortage of bridge labor, right. so, that's, mm -hmm. so they they're more apt to give you a good number. Right, but, so as far as we're concerned, it's a question of. A, a little bit of evaluation of which one we want to do, but do we want to say we're going to do option? Well, I didn't hear option three yet. Okay, option okay. three is basically to go six feet below stream bottom and put footings. So, so you have, you know, you're buried really deep with the abutments. And, and, that, and that, you know, that's the more expensive where they have to do, they're still going to do sheet piles, but they're going to have to do it and do dewatering. Right. You'll have to go pretty deep because, like, those sands that you have out there and gravel is going to. Water is going to come in. But your, your estimation is, is that that's slightly over engineered for the water yeah, flow, think, speeds think, of water flow that you have in that area. You know, I, I understand, you know, I grew up in a small town and I know it's not, you know, that would be more of a, you know, I'm looking at, what was that? You know, $300,000, right. 275, 300. You know, and that, again, that could be yeah. plus or minus a little bit, but, mm -hmm. but that's if you do that full, full structure. Yeah. And that's based again on a bunch of them. And in one sense, as far as the bridge, Surface itself is concerned. That the longevity of the surface is six to one and a half a dozen. Yeah, that's the other. same. Actually, all three options. Three so options. it's it's you know, placing faith in your evaluation that the speed of the water, even during a flood stage in that particular situation, doesn't call for options. Doesn't require what happens from options. Yeah, what you find is in, in your current condition, if it ever did really flood there, right. if I go over the road and, and cause problems on the downstream, right. As opposed to yeah, as know. opposed to taking and then when we open it up that much, it's it's just yeah yeah. 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 So.
Yeah, because I, I kind of like option two, but um, and then it's a question of if, if it's less expensive to do a board in place, but it requires that we're closed a little bit longer, it's still less expensive. Yeah, and, and it's, plus it's it's getting the best bang for the buck. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, why do we why are we going to short short arm ourselves yeah. when when we're going through all yeah. this? Yeah. Well, you guys went through a lot. Right. Of it. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. let's just do it. My opinion is. Yep. And it's strictly mine. It's do it the right, the best, equitable way. Right. And. Well, option two strikes me as being adequate to what we need to do, um, and then if pouring it in place is a little less expensive, but we end up with essentially the same lifespan on the bridge, um, I would go with the least expensive of the. Um, I, I, I like the port in place. You know, you're going to get a hundred year bridge with a port in place. Right. You know, and yeah. one thing about port in place too is that, like, especially footings. Think about that. You know, it fits in the nooks and crannies. Right. You're not like trying to force a, a block footing something. Right, like putting something around in a square so hole. Put a right. pebble exactly. under it, it yeah. won't rock. You know how many times, too, like, other, other, by doing a board in place, we run into bedrock. Well, all I do is say, okay, well, bedrock's not going anywhere. So right. just, you know, we mold it to the bedrock, right. Right. make it work even better. It's so, locked in place. Lenny, does that make sense to you all? Yeah. So do you take like option two with a board in place? Oh, definitely. Yeah. John? I, I, yeah. Do you, I, do you, I mean, I, 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 I've thought about this in the Pass. You know, you're you're new to the seat right now. I know you've thought about it, but I'm I'm ready enough to say let's go ahead and start the process. I, I me, I, I like to I don't like to jump. I, I you know what I'm saying. I know we have to get it going. Yeah. But I just don't like to jump. Okay. At at, at something okay. that is this expensive. Right. You know, for the town. Yeah. I mean, I I hear what you guys are saying, but that's just me. Well, Actually, no, if we, we could be, flip flip some pages too. I have some. Yeah, so the first one, don't worry about that. Make your sales pitch here. Yeah. Well, no, I just want you to see. I, I put some stuff in there. Um, let's see what I, I'm trying to remember. What's in there. This is the port in place one? So, yeah, actually, option two, yeah. Uh, you should see the... Um, so, so that's what the decks all look the same. Yeah. Go oh, back to one more page and we'll look at this. Right this is the first one. Okay, so this is the one we did in Westmoreland, which is, happens to be their dump road. It also connects two DOT roads and their town hall is there. Yeah. But basically... If you look in that elevation at the bottom, you see the circular pipes? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what was there. So, right here. Yeah. yeah. So what we did is we ended up, you know, we, we drove the sheets, and then we went ahead and poured a footing, leaving the pipes in, basically, to keep the water. In other words, the water is going through the pipes so you can build your footings, which is exactly what we would do on, your, on yours. Mm -hmm. right. And, um, you know, then they just pour, they pour the two, like, basically the short, shorter abutments, and then, the, and then you take the two pipes out, clean up your stream, which is actually where your wetland permit is. You don't need a wetland permit to build the footings or the bridge because you're out of the wetlands. In it's just when you right. restore the stream. So right. it's an easy permit because they want to restore the stream. You know, it's a positive. There's, right. no, there's no fight over it. So then if you flip the page, I gave you a picture of, um, just to kind of, I think you kind of understand it anyway. Yeah. But um, So you see, see the sheets? Yeah. So, what it is, so you overdig and you put some fabric and some crushed stone, and then you pour the abutment. Once the rebar is fully tied, this one's... But you see how you leave the pipes in. Mm -hmm. And then after those are in, then you can pull the pipes out. Right. So that's... And then if you, if you flip the page again, no matter what method we use, the deck is going to... Well, the port of place deck, that's what it looks like. They would have yeah. done that back at the shop if it was a... Uh, precast, precast, they would have done it and right. brought it. Because yeah. precast comes in pieces. Because yeah. they can't lift, you know. So right. it goes in pieces. Then you have to squeeze it together. Yeah. But then you have little problems where the joints are. So you've got to pour an overlay. Right. So you still lose three or four days for the overlay to right. cure. Okay. So I kind of like... In my mind, I don't like to do it unless... The only thing is you can set the precast in one day. Right. Where it takes them maybe a week to set the forms. Right. And, and get everything, you know... It doesn't take long to drop the rebar in once the forms are there. It's like a giant sandbox. Right. But see, you know, you're going to lose a little bit of time. But like I said, I, I like the port in place. Well, it strikes me is, is yeah, that by doing a port in place, looks like it might cost us an extra week to a week and a half, which could be, yeah. you know, the reason that it's a week and a half and then, is that it could be another two days that normal access to the station is denied. <clears throat> yep. And then I wanted to show you a side elevation, too. Um, this is side mounted rail. Mm -hmm. It's a federal highway, allows it, it's rated. Uh, you use it all the time in Vermont. New Hampshire likes the top mounted rail, but it adds it can add fifteen thousand dollars for a little bridge like this. Just for the, it's just because it's a different system. You know, this just requires a U bolt in the deck. Right. So your minimum deck thickness on short spans is seventeen inches to get the U bolt in properly. Right. But it holds the deck, holds the rail on. But on top of the deck, you have to make the deck wider to keep your lane. You, so two things. So you, you also make the deck wider. If you use the top mounted rail that DOT prefers on their highways, <clears throat> there's really no. 
No, for a town, there's no reason to use that. I, I just can't see spending an extra You've 15 You've never had, uh, um, one of the things we're going to be doing is whatever plans that we have, we'll send them to DOT to make the sure that DOT finds them yep. acceptable. You, have you ever had DOT deny a bridge because it has side-mounted rails? No, okay. no. I mean, what they try to do is make us use stainless steel hardware. Right. That was the Steve Lee Aquas before he retired. That was on one of the ones he looked at. He said, "Can you use stainless steel?" See, what they're afraid of is that if you don't, you know you do wash if you wash right. your bridge every few years too, it'll last for, forever. If, if you get moss and stuff growing, but what happens is if the dirt gets between the rail and the bridge, it, it can it corrode stays. it. Right. Yeah. Well, the dirt, it's just moisture. Yeah, right? we had to we and they're galvanized U-bolts, yeah. okay? So they'll last a long time if you just <laughs> rinse them off. Right. And um, so what it is, is they preferred stainless hardware, but the stainless is wicked. You get stainless oh, yeah. that's an inch and a quarter right. U-bolt, and very expensive hardware. Yeah. So the town that I just did this in, even though the state recommended that, right. the town said no. They, well, they, I mean, they, I they understand the galvanized that, hardware because we, we can just establish a policy to clean them off every couple of years with a pressure washer. But yeah, I, and I that's understand, I understand municipal history yeah. when things get forgotten, but yeah. yeah, yeah. But that was the only comment that we had on using these systems okay. um, from in the past. And, and again, we're following the same standards. You know, everyone asks like, how do we do it at a reasonable price? Right. And everyone can't. Well, I'm a working engineer. Yeah. You know? I'm not one of three owners that make a quarter million or a half million don't even go to the office. No, I, I mean, I, I do as much of the design right. as the other engineers. Well, do. no, we so, talk quite a bit about so the price-wise. I, I think I, I understand your business model, and I like the yeah. way it fits into small towns uh, right. very well. And I do know that when I looked over to the contract for services and stuff like that, is, is that once you have the plan, you file for all the required DOT permits, you make sure that DO, I mean, the DES permits, you make sure yeah. the DOT likes the bridge. Um, you are in charge of uh, making sure that the bid proposal goes out to the right yeah. places. Um, yeah, and we and have our, you know, we have nine or so you, contractors. Just going work. over, you vet what comes in, that it met yep. all the criteria, and then there was, the, I, this is the one place I'm a little clear, if there were seven people that bid, and two of them are like way out of line, right. um, you made a re would make a recommendation to a body of selectmen. Yes, yeah. is that you? I got seven. These are the three, the, three the best ones. price and the most valid, right? right? And that's yeah. kind of the way you. And I'll, I'll give you a choice too, which you can pick DOT pre-qualified bridge companies, right? Yeah. And like I said, you know, Ackworth, we did the same thing, right? Um, the one they were doing the slab, they didn't. Right. The other one they did. Right. Uh, full so bridge. if it's a non-DOT qualified bridge it's, it's company, a, if they're a good contractor, maybe it's okay. But if that's. By your recommendation. Well, right? yeah, and, and you can also make that choice whether you want well, to. Well, you call up and check your references and right. stuff like I think that. what Ackworth more or less said was, let's get everybody and see what we get, right. and then make the decision after. Yeah. But Don't want to put you on the spot, but is it reasonable to assume that you've been in this particular marketplace long enough that you know the people that you trust? Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. absolutely. I didn't say who's trustworthy. Yeah. I said the people you trust, right? Yeah, yeah no, I, we have right. a good I'm going to make sure. So what I do, just so you know, and it's, it's legitimate, is we yeah. email out the plans as soon as we're ready to bid them. Yeah. Like, I advertise it on Construction Summary, which is online, yeah. which also gets to works in progress in a bunch of places. Mm -hmm. We also email out PDFs to a list. I mean, I'll right. have a list over here. It might be slightly different than on the other side right. of the state. because you know who's here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, maybe okay. a dozen contractors, and they get it instantly. Yeah. So I know they're looking at it. So I know you're going to get good people looking. Mm -hmm. And then if someone else comes in from the online stuff, that's great. Right. But, but I at least start with a core group. You have a core group. Yeah. Of I've been in the business since 88 or so. You know, I, I, yeah, you develop... Relationship. Yeah. So anything else technical on a, no. you want it for when you're reviewing it? Do you yeah. want to have it no. read? I, I don't know if anybody in the... I don't yeah. know no, I'm getting, the one other question I had is is the removal of the existing stuff. That In order to take out those existing culverts, they, that doesn't require any particular thing from DES. Actually, no, that, that is what... Basically what happens is you build your footings and your stem walls, right. and then the contractor has to reach over right. and Just get those out of there, and they restore the stream. And that's what your permits oh, for. That's what the, right. permits for. the permits because yeah. you're restoring the okay. stream and okay. removing. So removing the pipes, you are in the wetlands. It's right. funny because the whole bridge doesn't. Right. The disposal wetlands. of the old culverts is all part of the price. Yep, and yeah. you can decide if you want something if they're decent enough or if they're not. You know, everything goes to the contractor unless you say otherwise in right. the contract documents. There's um in the so, demolitions we follow DOT specifications, mm -hmm. so everything is done by their items. And they have one that says basically the contractor is responsible for getting rid of everything. Right. Now, sometimes towns will say, well, there's some nice granite blocks, some nice rock, right. or even a nice culvert. Right. That if it's savable, 
yeah. we want to salvage it to town. So we put a note on the plan so the contractor knows okay. that he can't factor that in as a little bonus. Yeah, I'm trying to think right now if the, the, the stone that's associated with that bridge is, well, you remember from looking at it, just nothing special about that. So no, it's not it's not right. yeah. Occasionally we're into that cut granite, which is Right. Yeah, floor. we have places that have that. Kind yeah. Of thing. Okay. Um, anything from the public? All right. Um, I, I think these plans have been available to the public, but we'll leave one more copy out. And what we're yeah, looking there's at. There's a couple pictures in there. Right. The, we're looking at, been out, out we really are looking at option two. So the um, snow has gone. Oh, yes. You, yep. you said and when the weather scientist has the plan, oh, okay. he'll be out. He'll okay. see some flags out there. And right now, John, in a sense, we're leaning towards the. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm kind of in favor of it, but it's plenty as far as the uh, poured in place as yeah. opposed to precast, yeah. right? I mean, that's the way it looks like. I, mean, I like doing those. Yeah. Like I said, the, the only thing, like I was trying to say, is if you get a not an experienced bridge guy, which I don't necessarily right. recommend, like an excavation contractor, those guys like to right. set precast because that's what they can do. Yeah. So sometimes if you bid both options, yeah. you, you know what I mean? You, you, you never know what you're going to get for a price. Right. But I, I like the poured in place. Like I said, the versatility, you know. Things change. You can pour. Well, I mean, I look at the primary advantage I see is it's a single unit. Quality. It's a single unit. It doesn't have a lot of seams in it, which isn't going to make a lot of difference for 80 years. But in 80 years, it would yeah, make yeah, a difference, yeah. right? No, I like. I love, definitely like the yeah. port in place. And if you have good experience, rich contractors, yes. you're going to get the best price for the port in place. Okay. If you have someone out there that just does excavation that right. wants to try it. They can do better with precast. Right. Okay. That's all. And I'm just saying, occasionally that happens. Yeah. So, John, you figure we we do have a work session next week. So everybody's aware Absolutely. of it. Could you say yes yeah. or no, and then we can yeah. give you a call we'll next call. week, no, uh, probably fine. Wednesday yeah. of next yeah. week, and let you know. That's I'm sorry. Good. I just I just John, go on the edge of John, no 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 no. John <laughs> Lenny Lenny and, and and Lawrence and I we spent. A long yeah. time going over this. this you're, you're playing a little catch up. So, yeah. And one thing too, uh, half of our work is for contractors. Like the Saco thing we're doing, we're just jacking the bridge up there, Route 16 over the river. So I mean, I know the contractors well. You know, we do a lot of. So right. I know who's good and who isn't. Okay. And, and again, we design things that are cost effective and constructive because we do design builds as well. Right. So in other words, our design has to be the most competitive for right. them to win. And, okay. uh, and a lot of them hire us. And, okay. You know, in this area, like, like I said, there's a, there's a bunch of people that. Well, I, just so everybody's aware, I did check out the references you gave us. I didn't get response from two of them, but the ones that I did get responses to gave me no reason to think that I didn't want to work with you. So. Right. Well, feel free to call. Keep yeah. calling. Yeah. So everybody's busy out there too. A lot of them right. are probably work contractors right. or town yeah. people, but they yeah. get busy. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. One thing we should check with is make sure that our waste hauler has looked at uh, Colquhart Hill. The okay. back way in there, make sure what they can haul and can and can't haul out of there. Um, yeah. So, D David, Thanks, before you go, what is actually, what do you think is the timeline for this from start to finish? A month? You mean to build it? Yeah, to, so, I, no, it's to, to people, close it. For close. To, we Suppose close we, it and open it up again to traffic. I mean, to be safe, I'd probably go with six weeks, something like that. Um, Okay. I, I would throw the option. We could have put a temporary. We could have done it in stages, but it's more expensive. It adds a third of the cost yeah. if you put a construction joint down the middle. Um, yeah, it, and it doesn't really make sense with removing the. You know, I, I looked at some other ways to do that. Um, I haven't looked at your back way in, but I think to be safe, I probably would do the six weeks. That gives them essentially they get in there, they put the footings in quick, and then they got the two abutments to do, and yeah. the, and the deck. Like I said, it takes a week to cure. Yeah. And the abutments, the footings, they have cure time on those too. And that's barring good weather, so you got to kind of. So, we're just thinking along these lines, we got to make sure we're going to do that because that road, its dust situation needs to be considered when we need to yeah. close it, stuff like that. Um, so that, that's a pretty important mm -hmm. part of what we need to think about. The other thing is just like bulky stuff. If they could get an empty an empty thing over that, but they don't want to haul out the bulky stuff, we could store a couple of them down there. But it's the Household garbage that we need to really worry about, and they may recommend that we go with a slightly smaller container for a while. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. But that's the kind of stuff we should check on. Okay. Yeah. You couldn't have it. I'm just throwing something out there from another town. But they have, they they park the truck somewhere. Like in other words, they have oh, to maybe a truck like in your right. driveway out here or something instead. It of may be what we end up doing. Okay. Uh, I just uh, yeah yeah. No, no, that's a good idea. Yeah. 
Yeah. Just no, for it didn't occur to me that if we had to have an auxiliary site someplace down by the salt shed might work or something like that, we could find a place to do it. You know? We could find a place, yeah. I'm sure. And then when people come in, they just throw it into the truck instead of... Yeah. I think, I've seen it before, so I think yeah. we have to look not so much at the inconvenience, but down, you know, the light at the end of the. Oh, I'm just trying to mitigate yeah. it now. It's, yeah. it's six weeks of inconvenience, yeah. one way or the other. One way or the other. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully, we get the best deal for the money. And uh, we can we put can... damages in too. Like if they don't have it done, we'll figure out a time that's reasonable for a good contractor. Yes. But you can hit them. I mean, in Windsor, we eight hundred dollars a day every right. day they weren't done, and then they gave bonuses if they finished it early. Right. And sometimes it's worth it to just. Because other jobs might not have anything, right. like any damages or anything, right. so they'll work on yours instead of the other one. Right. You know, because all, all contractors have multiple jobs. Let's face it. Yeah. You know, but then, oh, so we can certainly do okay. that. Okay. Thank you. Put, yeah. You know. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, that being done, uh, this is regular public comment now. As everybody knows, keeps it polite. If it's about a uh, town employee or somebody we do business with, please submit it in writing. Other than that, keep it polite and mention your name and whether you're a resident of Ebbingham or not. In the back. Uh, so I have my Preservation Society hat on, and um, we want to thank you very much for allowing us on June 24th to detour the traffic around and have the second annual Drake's Corner Street Fair. June 24th. And everybody knows that we're all counting the days until Route 16 Dairy Bar is open. But 28 days after that, there'll be Edith's Rhubarb Muffins and the uh, Preservation Society because we're opening on Memorial Day weekend that Saturday. All right. So I have two, uh, no, one, one other date for you, which is uh, Wednesday evening, June 28th. The New Hampshire Preservation Alliance is sending a speaker to, uh, we're, we're hosting them at the Preservation Society to talk about their 52 barns in 52 weeks program. And their goal this year is to save 52 barns in New Hampshire to preserve the rural character of our state. Um, and they're helping people to tap into this, the RSA, which allows people to approach their local select board and ask for um, tax Yes, remediation yeah. on on historic barns. Right. On historic In other words, you have a barn that's evaluated at X, you fix it up, it's now evaluated higher, so your taxes go up, which makes you Correct. stop fixing it in the first place. Correct. So you get an abate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and it's actually yeah. So it's an easement. An easement is put on the barn. The easement lasts for ten years, and the idea is that then it just keeps rolling over. Right. So you're not penalized for fixing right. your barn up, and yeah. that 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 some towns have have even. Reduce the tax rate right off the bat. Right. You can go down 75 to even 50 percent right. to encourage people to fix this building up. So short term, it seems to the town's folks like you're losing tax money, but long term, you're maintaining all these buildings. Right. And so they're there for your town long term to continue. And that's on. just barns. And they're also there for the, to maintain the rural character mm -hmm. of your town. So Wednesday evening, the 28th, they'll be there to talk to. Um, I imagine that the audience will be people with barns right. from, you know, Freedom to Effingham to Wolfboro um, that are interested in this. But you're also welcome to come if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the program. Okay. And I did drop some information off a couple weeks ago with John. Yeah. 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 Um, copies that could be kept here at the town office so that if people came in to ask about it, copies could be made and shared with people. Okay. Didn't know if you wanted me to do any more legwork um, in the background beforehand. If you wanted more information on it, more of a conversation on it, or if that's the next. I'm, I'm good enough. Step for you. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted that out there because I know I have already heard at the Wolfboro meeting there were Effingham residents there who already have this in the back of their right. mind. So um, you, okay. will, you will mm -hmm. definitely have people that will be approaching you to take advantage Thank you. of this. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, just to let you know, um, I hear that the, the library window discussion is, has come round again, comes round every once in a while. The Preservation Society has um, purchased a, a historic storm window for our building as a template, and we're going to have it installed. And once it's installed, we thought we would invite you to come have a look. Okay. Uh, to see how it works out, because we think that that would be a good good model uh, and of good quality to use on the library. Okay. Thank you. So know that we have a, a sample going in, good. and you'll be able to have a look at that. What, what is that going to be, Karen? Yeah. I would say that would be this 
It'll be in this spring. Okay. We had thought we'd maybe even have some sort of window seminar um, July, August for townspeople, but also for right. public buildings, for people who okay. uh, have windows that they're dealing with. Thank so you. we're working parallel to you. I want to make sure that paths crossed and didn't right. go off in two totally different directions because we are hoping to have some resources for window repair. Okay, thank you. I saw your hangover earlier. Eric Jones wearing my library trustee hat. Um, as everyone's probably aware, this year represents the 100th anniversary of the United States involvement in World War I. And this Saturday, the library is kicking off about an 18th month series of programming related to that topic. Um, this Saturday, we're having uh, Dr. Marion Gerard Dorsey from the History Department at UNH. She's an associate professor. She's going to be speaking on the topic of chemical warfare, specifically on its uses in World War I, but she does touch a little bit on how it came about before that war and, you know, its, its sort of legacies up to in, and including the present day. Uh, that lecture starts at 1 p.m. on Saturday. Um, it's free and open to the public, so come on by. Um, and there's a poster for it out in the hallway if anybody wants to read up a little bit more on, on specifically what she'll be talking about and Dr. Dorsey's background and so forth. Thank you. Public comment. James Charles, Jack Russell. Um, last week you discussed the three modulus landings for the modulus season. Yeah. Three landings for the modulus. You gave a figure of 44,000 in the municipal building fund. That that number, uh, just so you have the right numbers, 16,000 that is already earmarked yep. for electrical fuel and salaries. So and the salaries? Numbers, yeah, and salaries. Oh, so okay, the yes. Number, yeah. The number no, no. that you, you, you yeah. have is, is, is not right. And you had mentioned also that 5,800 of that goes to the library alarm system, right. which is under capital outlay, not under municipal buildings. Right. So okay. what, it appears, just, what it appears you have in there is, just so you know, yeah. is, is about 27000 which is currently about 6-7% over budget right now. Right. And that is only under maintenance supplies and equipment. Yeah. I'm not sure what you've got EMR for maintenance supplies and equipment, but that's, yeah. you don't just, really have 44000 Yeah, just so you're aware of it, when, it, when I look at the number of 44000 and check with the office, I mean, this was during the budgetary process, essentially 20 of that's right off the top, it's just your annual expected expenses. So we were looking at about $20,000 that you had discretionary expenditures, um, and we're being very conscious of what it is right. that we are But the way it was portrayed at the meeting, it was 44 minus 48 because of the alarm right. system, and there right. wasn't about, yeah. there was... The way I look at it right now is, is that we're kind of down to about $17,000 of discretionary money in that fund. And just and, so and we're looking at the whole budget, not... Yeah. But you've already got EMI for that budget, right. that's why yeah. I looked at that. Yeah. Uh, I, I did learn, I personally learned that lesson is to you know, pay attention to what your annual expenses are in relationship to it. And that's why it was actually, I think, two years ago that the town put the money up a little bit because we were you know, running out. Well, all the, the reason time. Is, is obviously on the budget committee, right. we've seen the yeah. overages. Yeah, and no, it's like we have, have an issue coming up about. Make that decision. Yeah. yeah, there's an, old, uh, an issue coming up about electrical work out back, and we have to play that against you know, how much money do we have in the fund to do it. So. Thank you. I, I appreciate your concern. Just a question to Mr. Strauss's comment. As I understand it, there is a line item in the Selectman's budget for municipal buildings, and then there is the municipal buildings expendable trust fund. Right. Which one is he talking about? Because I would be kind of shocked to find that salary money is coming out of the municipal building's expendable trust right. fund. Yeah, I, at this point, uh, it, I sit down with Claudia and really get the answer to the question, but it's, I, I'm not looking for an answer to that question now, but I do understand what you're talking that's about. It's not the trust fund, that's no, the no, municipal no. building. Yeah, as, far as, a, as far as the discussion between the two of you to decide which is this, yeah. you, the fact that your expressed concern that we pay attention um, yeah. is well that's taken well. And, and valuable, um, but we will figure out when we need to spend money on a building, which account it should come from. So, thank you. Uh, anything else in public comment? All right. Uh, I changed the agenda a little bit, just the format of it. Try to, you know, 
I hope, I hope you all have, uh, approve of that. Proposed work sessions, just so everybody's aware of it, next week we don't have a regular meeting, but at 4.30 we're meeting for a work session, and so far on the list of things we need to work about is John's going to come up with his final appraisal of the bridge thing, uh, Lenny and I too, but we'll make a decision uh, which, which one to go with, um, and then get in touch with Michi. Uh, there is a slight concern in the office raised between how the procurement policy and the, sum, and the road contract that we are proposing um, mesh together, and that will get discussed at that meeting. Um, and then I also just wanted to bring up the fact that, um, Mr. Strauss, you brought up a thing on grants. Um, I have made sure that the other selectmen have the uh, engineer's report on that building and the things that needed to be done. And one of the things that will get discussed at that meeting, um, not tonight because there's a budget meeting, we're in a little bit of a time crunch, um, is where to get the money, where to take the money to pay for the grant appraisal. Right? Understanding that they have to come in and look at what's needed and then go and apply it to what they know is available. But that costs money too. So hopefully the, the other two selectmen and myself will have a chance to review the documents that when we did the original work, came to these two things that need to be done. Um, and then we'll just make a decision on where we're going to pull the money, and I'll start getting in touch with people and have them come down and look at this. Do you need additional information from Yeah, I, no, if I do, I know where to go. Um, but uh, I do have all the information you gave me originally. I also have a list of uh, other grant writers from the person I originally got in touch with got too busy, and they gave me recommendations for other people. So um, I am kind of looking at this personally as uh, something I really want to make sure it gets going this year is, is that we have a grant writer involved in the library. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And that's about the work session. So um, just everybody's aware we do know we still need to go over the snow shoveling one, roadside mowing. Um, um, I did uh, give uh, the other selectmen a copies from uh, Wilmot, New Hampshire, of a RFP for engineering services. Um, again, that's probably something else that we can touch on at next week's. Um, next week's work session um, because we have to get an RFP out to hire a new firm because we need that to be able to attach it to Stevens Road. So uh, can you think of anything else during next week's work session that you might want to bring up, John? i just like to announce that, you know, I mean, as opposed no, to putting just, any other business I just, Well, I showed you guys just that I did get a hold of a company. That specialize. It's called Team. It's Team Engineering New Hampshire. Right. And what they do is they evaluate. They come out and they evaluate every building you have. Yeah. What um, what the, the the needs are, the cost the cost of the need, right. and how to budget it every year so you can get to that right. time when you have to repair right. like a hot water heater or, a, or or anything. Right. They'll tell you exactly how much, well, pretty much exactly how much you have to put away. Right. So there's no guesswork yeah. on, you know, what do we have to put away for the library? What do we have to put away for the town hall? What do we have to put away for, yeah. you know, for any of the bills, for yeah. the modules or yeah. whatever? They come up with that idea. I'm right. sure it's costly, but I just got online and I just started Googling it. Yeah. And that was, that's okay. what I came up with. Okay, I'll leave it in the office if you okay. guys want to look at it. Uh, which, kind of jumping a little bit around, Lenny, um, you're familiar with what John brought on the, the uh, metal steps for the train right. station. Yeah, he told me about it. I, I didn't see the paperwork. Right. Um, but that, your understanding, that's kind of what we need, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, and then the one thing they said is, is that they're all 24 inches wide, but the length should be longer than the open. Right. This price quoted here, and we end up needing a forum, is $170, but if this is it only, uh, it's not five feet long. So the cost it's of It's not a, mandated that we get one that's wider than the open. It's a good idea. It's, he suggested, this guy uh, from OSHA, I, con I contacted OSHA, and he got back to me, the yeah. guy Ryan. And uh, he said it doesn't necessarily have to be as wide as the opening. But if you can go wider than the opening, it's right. always good. Right. Do you want to bring in a price on what a wider one would be? Because, I mean, I'm, we need them. I figure, I just assume we order them. Well, the price is right on it. Right. For, for, the, for the wider one, too? Oh, yeah, there, there's no, there's three sizes. I got this three different sizes okay. again. There's a 48 by 24. Yeah. Okay. There's two, 220. And 48 is enough? 48 is exactly what that opening is. Okay. Four foot. Right. And there was one that was five feet, so that's six. 
Yeah, that's fifty. Yeah, I think it's so. Is there inches. a price for the five foot one? Then? But you I just got to remember that they got to lift it up. It's heavy too. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. you got to just got to be. You know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's not it. So you take four. You wanted to order the four foot. I. I would. It's up to. Well, Lenny goes down there enough. I think he, he can give a better judgment on what. Right. Do you want to talk with Mark yeah. about? Yeah. I'll go what, over tomorrow. Is the weight listed on there? Lenny? See it right off the okay. top of my head. I don't imagine it. Uh, weight in pounds. I think the weight got one here says 48 pounds on this one here, and this is a t t 24 by 48, and yeah, 5 for 10 and 4 legs. The 48 inch one is 48 pounds. Yeah. So that should be fine. And if you buy three or more, they're cheaper. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so you want to just run it by Mark yeah. and see whether he thinks that suits him, yeah. and then and we'll they're adjustable. Right. From they right. go from. Yeah. So it tells you what the okay what is on <clears throat> eight inches high. All right. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Can we get back to um, lifting the weight limit on the roads? We kind of went. Yeah. I'm sorry. Past number six. Yep. Um, this is the state. I mean, I, I don't see a reason not to lift it. Lifting. Currently lifting the weight limits, right? Lenny? No reason not to no. lift the weight. Maybe on some roads. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. Would you want to wait another week? And lift Because you can't really do one road. you got to do them all. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can't really. Uh, right. If you want to wait another week, we can wait another week. Because I know okay. a lot of the roads you could probably get old, but you can't go up around the dump road that way. Yeah. Because the dirt part of it? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, mean, I wouldn't take that posting off. Well, yeah. So you, we'll, we'll wait another week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One more. Well, as of today, Ospie's roads are still posted. So. Okay. Oh, did you get a chance to look at the fire department stores? I, I got okay. I don't. I, I didn't. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, we have to start thinking about the Pine River Road culvert. Uh, the problem. Are you aware of it? Part of the culvert's actually lifted. Yeah. It's, it's not a simple fix. We have to dig up the road and stuff like uh -huh. that. But um, um, that needs to get done pretty soon. I'm looking at the Molly Philbrook one. And, that need, I mean, they all need to get done, but I'm thinking the Pine River culvert is the one that we really need to look at. So if you want to start yeah. plan, planning on having uh, Dick and Dose go up there and give us an idea, what do you think it would cost to replace that? Yeah. And I would, I would, Lenny, I would like to have from them what he anticipates it'll cost based upon his agreement payments, the, the town's agreed payments to him. But give us an idea what it would be before he starts. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. And I'm assuming that it isn't a question of digging up, straighten it out, and put it back. We need to hold a culvert and stuff like that. So, okay. Um, so I'll uh, get in touch with uh, Bob tomorrow on that. It might be <coughs> Thursday before I get to it, but call Bob and get an idea of how long it would take and what it would cost, time and money. Uh, and then the other thing we need to do, but we do have the road contract, hopefully will be coming up pretty soon, um, not being guaranteed who's going to be as far, as far as starting to try to get the liaison between our people and the Bonnyman Road people. We might as well wait till that's done. Uh, we got a pretty good quote on the Snow Road one in Granite. Um, it's going to be, the, you know, I mean, that's in really early stages, yeah. so that's quite a ways away. I talked about the grant stuff. Some of the things that Lenny was talking about uh, was just looking into not needing an engineering study on the Molly Gilbert culvert. Um, it's one of the questions that we kind of need to. That's if we have an, in, an engineering service that we were contracted with for information. That's when I looked over the RFP for the one out of Wilma. That's kind of what they're looking for. Is who do we call when we have a question? Um, if the planning board had a question, who would they call as an engineer? Mm -hmm. And what you're basically is you have an agreed price per hour for information and stuff like that with an engineering firm. This is for the culverts. Yeah, right. Well, I think I did give you a price on, uh, uh, I think it 
I'm going to make a little noise here. <laughs> I think I did, did give you guys paperwork. I did contact, uh, uh, this is before Selectman, I, was, uh, I contacted uh, Jim Ryans. Yeah. And he kind of gave me a breakdown of what it's, it's a hundred bucks an hour. So he said, we should, if we wanted to get his company as an engineering right. oversight, it was, he said, between five and right. seven grand right. for the, you know, for the whole the contract right. for him to oversee right. stuff. So I don't know. Well, it's, you know. it's a starting figure, but yeah. you know, basically because, uh, so you're saying in a given year, because if you're looking at the procurement policy, it's stipulating that if you anticipate for professional services, you're spending over $15,000 a year. So for general run-of-the-mill questions that arise, that wouldn't come into play if no. that price is right. But we also know that we've got these bridge things coming up, and we're going to be utilizing the services of that engineer. Well, no, he doesn't do bridges. He doesn't right. do structure. Right. He just does. Yeah. You know, he doesn't do yeah. He made it very clear. Yeah. He, actually, he gave me Ekman's yeah, So, municipal engineering advice, and then there's actual project design and implementation. So, they're two separate things. And so, when you're thinking about the town hiring the services of an engineer as a go to firm, it's more the incidental things that come up. Roads and stuff. Like but that. even if you did have a contract with a company to do that, and you had to all of a sudden replace Granite Road Bridge, you would not necessarily give that job to those people, but you'd put that particular job out to bid. Sure. That's the way you play yeah, it. That's the way I would play Okay, so that makes it, do you understand? Yeah. Okay, so I mean, that makes it different in what we're trying to do in the sense of what we need to do contractually because of the procurement policy yeah. uh -huh. uh, for just having general engineering advice. Because occasionally the, the uh, planning board has information that they want. More often than not, when the planning board is concerned, it's the landowner's responsibility to pay for it. Right. Well, yeah. But if it's an evaluation of a plan that's been given to them by a developer or something like that, and they want an engineering device, then the town has to pay for it. But I think what I, the engineering firm or the right. whoever, if we even go that way, yeah, it would. They're not. You wouldn't hire them for a big project, right? Like Granite Bridge or Snow Road Bridge right. or gotcha. Stevens Road. I yeah. mean, you would. That's talk, what we said. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, that's what you yeah. would get him to do, like. Well, the Townhouse Road. He oversaw Townhouse Road for the first part of the project. Right. He sent a guy there. You know, Mark Lucy was there yeah. almost every. Well, anyway, kick a few stones and yeah, say and that yeah, they put them down. Right. Yeah, the check dams were blown yeah. out. You know, yeah. so but that's basically what I would think that you would need. Yeah. You know, if you had to put a culvert placement. You know, okay. Carlos Adams still says to me when I talked to him, he said Molly Phil Philbrook. He said you should have an engineer look at it, but we don't have to. By statute, we don't have to, right. because we have that, uh, there's that, uh, what is it, culvert maintainer. Well, the one uh, reason that I look at that one is I'd like to have an engineer look at it is it's not so much the inflow of the water, it's the outflow, because it goes over, that bank drops down almost vertically for about 14 feet at the outflow uh -huh. side of that culvert, and you could run into some real erosion problems there. So, that's something that we... All right, so... Uh, as I said, you got copies of that stuff from Wilmot. Get a yeah. chance to look that over. Yeah. We can continue this yeah, discussion right. on how we're going to break uh -huh. down the services. Uh, after you get the bridges done, there really won't be much of a need for an engineer. Um, just yeah. road issues yeah. at that yeah. point. You know, just road not. issues. I mean, you, yeah, you wouldn't have to get a structural one. Right. right. You know, the structural one's where the big money is. You know. Right. Well, it's all big money, but. Yeah. Okay. Well, if that's the case, what do you think about just putting an RFP out for doing the engineering services on Snow Road? I mean, on um, oh, Stevens Road. Just we need to put out a. It didn't uh, Bacon. What didn't you guys talk to Bacon? There were a couple other Bacon going to do that. A couple other companies involved in the process, but as far as I know, none of them were willing to come up and be the lead engineer on the job. All right. So we just need. Maybe to that would change. Well. You it's a possibility, but um, we still end up, because of the anticipation that the engineering fee for that bridge is going to be close to $15,000, our due diligence would be to put it out to bid for the engineering services. But what, for Stevens Road? Yeah. It ain't going to be anywhere near that amount. Okay, um, hopefully, yeah. Yeah. So this is an evalu and this is a funny point, right? It's an evaluation on my part. When it says putting an RFP out for, for professional services, it's it says if you anticipate yeah. that it's going to be over fifteen thousand dollars. 
So if at a public meeting our discussion between the selectmen comes to the conclusion that this particular engineering fee on this job isn't going to be $15,000, we don't have to put it out to bid. We can just go to somebody who we've used in the past or we know about or trust or whatever, I mean, whatever decision process we have, but we don't have to put it out to bid. Yeah. So are you comfortable in thinking that the Stevens Road engineering fees won't equal $15,000? Again, I wasn't part of that, right. so I don't. I don't know. But, I, I wasn't part. So of you the look at the other side. I think, of it. I think Lawrence asked Dave just off the cuff, right, one day, about the what it would cost. I talked to Dave Eckman. Yeah. yeah, he said about twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, right. And the only thing issue we have there, Lenny, is is that if we, Eckman, if we just say called Eckman up and said, "Would you want to take over that?" We're paying him X amount of money to do snow. Right, I realize that you add that together, and now we're looking yeah. at over fifteen thousand dollars, and that's where we run into yeah, running right. into Stephen having to do. wasn't going to be no fifteen thousand. Right? Yeah, yeah, but you add it up in one year, calendar year. If we're going to spend sixteen thousand dollars on an engineering yeah. firm, I, that we would have to put it up to bid. Yeah. Yeah. So when we and I'd like to just say, yes, let's just go ahead and let whoever it is take care of, start Stevens Road and get the project going with an engineer and finish it off with an engineer. But I'm a little leery about just saying, let's use Ekman because if we add them up together, you can't, it can come to 17.3. Yeah. All right. So two things that we would need to, to get valuable information is a really good estimate on what they think the engineering fees, and we received one on... Um, Snow Road and what it would be on Stevens, and um, if that's over fifteen thousand dollars accrued together in one year, we need to put it up to bid. Uh, we can't just go with a firm that we we're starting to like. So, all right, I, we need a little more information from Ackman on that. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll follow through with Ackman on that and, and, and present him with our particular uh, problem. Um, uh, or requirements that we have because of the procurement policy and see if we can, what numbers I can get from them. Uh, did you, uh, um, Stevens Road scouring? It's not any better. So, okay. <laughs> but you mean, you, if the like last time you looked, it didn't look worse. Well, well there's still a lot right of now. snow on it. Yeah, okay. But now the snow's going. I yeah. just got to wait till you can get down and yeah, keep okay. in that hole. Okay, and then we talked about the core sampling. Uh, John did the transfers, the landings there uh, for the transfer station. Uh, the uh, modular stuff. Uh, I had I he, I didn't go home first. Yeah, he did the revised thing. Yeah. Well, it's in my mailbox, but I didn't go. Or home. mean without using the text. without using the, the, the special yeah, yeah that's right the magic wood yeah the magic plastic wood right recycled yeah Lenny's point being why it's, it'll be green though just think of it right okay all right so we're still sort of waiting for the estimate on that I, I have it I just didn't go home I right. just got the text that it's in there so yeah. I can drop it off tomorrow all right because that's that's a must do and then we've got to get we could probably buy prefabricated metal steps for the fire exit out back Mike. I don't, I don't even think. Or was that, that part of his quote? I'm trying no. to. Because no. those well, need to be replaced. Yeah. Well, I don't think we need car. We don't have to get metal. No. For our steps. Okay. But we don't have to do that. All right. That's just, no. That's overkill. Okay. That's, so when we get to, it our, would be two weeks from now for a regular meeting, yeah. we'll look at the price on this because we have to replace the front yeah. steps one way or the other. Okay. Uh, we still have to do the salt shed, get that stuff on there. This, um, we have to look at what the cost of the cement skirting at the fire station is. Who do, who do we call for that, that Green Mountain? I don't know who, who you call. I don't know. Uh, for doing con small concrete repair? Yeah, Elliot. Yeah. Lawrence's son. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to do it? Just have him go down and get an estimate? Yeah. We, we've got to get... Yeah, it, it, it sticks it's on here every week. Yeah. Get, yeah. Is there a business name, Elliot? Yeah. Edwards Construction. Edwards Construction. Okay, all right, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, we did get a price quote on doing the electrical down at the police station. Is that from Dan? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I have too many pieces of paper here. But. Yeah, I think it was in the folder. Actually, I 
Action. This is Amadon, and we had uh, replacing all the fluorescent fixtures and stuff. We're looking at fifteen hundred dollars, um, and then we look at what it costs to fix. As I said, when we look at the municipal fund, we really need to spend the time exactly. looking where we're going to get the money. But yeah. I mean, it, it, I have no question that this needs to be done because I've been out there, and you know, lights are hanging from the ceiling and stuff like that. Uh, but I don't want to say yes right now. No, I don't want to say yes. Right. Yet. Okay. Well, we great place in the mall. Is that what he says? Uh, replace all existing four-foot fluorescent lights mm -hmm. with t uh, four T eights fluorescent fixtures. Install new double duplex receptacles. Well, um, then the bulbs. That is electricians. And we're looking at essentially we've got about uh, five hundred dollars worth of materials, and the rest is labor. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah. We're not going to yeah. make a decision on yeah. that tonight because we really need to sit down and look exactly where the money's coming from and how much we anticipate spending on other things. I got to admit, between the two of you guys, I think that should be fairly close to the top of the list. Though. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. very on the top. Okay. Anything new that you want to bring up, John? No. no Lenny. Um, you got a beaver problem on the Swamp Road. We got to keep an eye on. Uh, and according to you, it's a parallel to the road. Yeah, <laughs> but it's right up to the edge of the road. Right. Mike had an encounter with it yesterday, but uh, yeah. we got to keep an eye on it. So we may have to yeah. get Mike Nason. Yeah, I haven't done it in a couple of years. I used to walk on the road a lot in the spring. It always was up kind of close to the edge. But yeah, yeah. well, you can see where he's mudding up his yeah. little coffee dams. He's got yeah. half a dozen of them down really? the side of the road. Yeah. yeah. I just can't think of what he's eating out there. It sounds more like a muskrat. <laughs> mm. Still costs the same amount of money to get rid of. Mm -hmm. uh, so essentially, Lenny, you might keep just an eye on that. Yeah. And, you, and uh, John, are you comfortable if Lenny's opinion is that yeah. we need to send in the trapper to have Lenny let the office know? Is it, does it come at night with a stick? No. A no. What mat? he does is he comes with a bill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a great big bill. Big bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also. The gas tank out here, uh, Paul Miller get into it with his snow blower this one. Yeah. He said he was going to get a uh, gas company to replace that, but I see it hasn't been replaced oh. yet. So, so you want to call with Paul? You want to check with Paul Miller? Or yeah. Uh, oh, Paul. I'll go from there. And you just what, let the office know that you're interested in getting together with Davis when he starts doing that cemetery? Yeah. Likes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything, anything else, Lenny? I have nothing more. Uh, public comment. In the back. I thought I was out of here for free. Just a question from my own mind. I yep. wasn't around the original reasons for it. Could you tell me why there was no Rocking allowed on Champion Hill Road? Uh, my answer to that is because it's been that way since I moved into town. I, as a Drake Road right off of it, resident, I find that unacceptable. Right, no, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, no one's ever asked me the question before. Uh, I, I do know, Lawrence, you once told me that they didn't used to plow that road until like 30 years ago or something. Right. They just yeah. let it ice over in the winter. It's too bad they changed that. Yeah. When they, when they paved that road, they changed it from it changed it to just a one ton right. uh, rating. Does anybody in the room have, remember any logic associated with the reason that there's oh, no truck in there? Um, I think John was in there when that was done. No. Prior to you? That was before me. No, that was McConnell. Yeah, that was Bob McConnell. Bob yeah. McConnell, Chris Siemens, and uh, uh, Tom Green. Uh, um, I'm asking the question because you drive heavy trucks. Is there any particular reason that you would see that that should Dude. not be reevaluated. Yeah, yeah, huh? It's kind of Oh no, I, 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 I'm opening the discussion. I'm not saying yes or no, but if you have dump trucks going up through there, I right. think it would be I, I saw it going down <laughs> going west, you know, going down the other side of it's the more dangerous aspect of it in the spring when you get sand on that road and stuff like that. All right. Well, there's no particular reason for or against, but we'll bring it up again. I'll put it on the agenda just to, you know, concentrate on it a little bit. And I can't
can't give you an answer, but we'll think about it. But you will look into it? Yeah, yeah. That would be excellent. Thank you. What do you want to drive up that road? I don't want to drive up that road. I don't, I don't care what goes up the road. I want to have less log trucks on the great road yeah. than a killing way to go with that. Yeah. And what his recommendation will be, because he's the closest thing we have to traffic expert in town. But okay, uh, what we'll do is check with the chief of police and see if he can see a discernible safety reason why it should continue to be the way it is. Okay. You might, might want to put that along with reducing the speed limits on town roads. I spoke with the chief about that. It is not. A decision that the town makes about speed control. Right, uh, below a certain is, amount of miles exactly, per hour. Exactly, a right. study yeah. has to be done. Right. Yeah. Prior to that, well, and not I mean, by it, us. It goes back the to DOT. the fact is that yeah. I have no idea under what legal guidelines they posted it as no trucking in the past to begin with. But and it could have been a good idea, and it could still be a good idea. I just have never thought about it. So, not that that's signed. I just always, anyway. I just always accepted that you couldn't mm -hmm. do it. Um, so you have nothing else to bring up? No, Public no. comment in the back? Yes. Dan Murray, Stevens Road. Um, where you put Jersey Barrier off half that bridge, and there's still, I looked at it today, um, you may want to address your weight limit signs on that bridge, on that road, because the sign is still up at 30 times, I believe. Okay. Thank you. The bridge is six. Did you see yeah, but you're saying... Uh, what did you see today? Uh, looks worse than it did last fall. So. Yeah. Not surprising. So my yeah. wife travels that road four times a day. Your concern being is is that we have a sign that's posted as greater weight than you'd like to see on that bridge. Well, if you have a road posting at thirty times and you closed half the bridge, right? Yeah. You probably okay. have to assess that. Yeah. Problem. No, I'm, I'm, I regret that I did that when we originally put the barriers up and stuff like that. Um, we did put up signs. I believe just, the one at the end of Stevens Road still says thirty times. Right. I'm not. I'm saying is, is I just did not think about putting the uh, weight limit sign, but I'll look right into that Stevens Road weight limit. And do you have? A time period when you're going to have be able to put the RFP out, to put the bid out to do that. Uh, as it stands with the discussion that we had tonight, there was a couple of questions about how we could go about it and what the engineering services are. Um, the, one of the things we have to procurement policy, and the sticky point for selectmen is, is that if we anticipate spending over fifteen thousand dollars with a single vendor, in this case an engineering service, to do to do design the job and follow up on it and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, if the combined amount of money we're going to spend in a given year is over $15,000, we need to put it out to bid if you anticipate spending it on one company. Right? As it came up tonight, is, is that it doesn't look like the engineering services for that particular project are going to run much over $22,000. But if we add that, if we use the same engineering firm there that we're using on Snow Road, and we add those two figures together, we could come up with 17.5. So you're talking about 2,200. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, it just, it, it's just, a, it's a, a new regulation in town, and we really are learning how to deal with it. the hour and a half work with it. Right, yeah. So what I'm hoping is is that uh, I really do hope that Stevens Road, we got a shovel in the ground by the end of July at the latest, but oh, well, yeah. You, you're going to have to put your RPO for these 30 days. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. right. Yeah. But um, I'm going to be going over and looking over, looking at the, you know, looking at and, and thinking about it in these terms right now. And, and as soon as we can get an RFP out on an engineering service on the bridge. But the way from our conversation tonight is we'll deal with that as a separate issue. This is not the services of an engineer for the town. It's the services of an engineer for the single project. Correct. Right. Okay. Yes. Mr. Edwards. The prices that we got last year for the Stevens Road yeah. installation of that culvert, I think you'd be a lot wiser to put that out, give it to Edmund and let him put that out for bid. Because we had a price of 197000 oh, yeah. just yeah. to re just to do the installation. Yeah. And he thought about doing a whole snow road bridge for, for 200000 Right. So I think with the, his uh, number of contractors that he yeah. has, 
think he'd be wise and let him put that up. I, know, I agree with you 100%. His business model strikes me as exactly what Effingham is looking for. Lawrence, the problem is the $15,000 ceiling in the procurement policy. Because if we're spending money with Ekman on Snow Road and Stevens Road, and somebody looks and adds the two up and it comes to $17,500, we broke the law. Yes, but you can put his put the engineering services out for bed, and he's the cheapest one around, yeah. as far as I can say. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the way it's going to work. Yes? I have a, I have a question, Henry. The other week, uh, there was a bill, and and I was wondering, if, does the office staff go over what is in the folder as far as the bills before it comes to you guys, or are you guys the only ones that are doing the bills for the day? Um, the office staff receives the mail, opens the bills, puts them together, um, lines up their payment schedule on them and pays the bills. Um, what they generally give us in the manifest is a copy of the receipts. Well, the other week we were double billed, I believe, right, Mr. S.P., about with uh, the road contractor and yeah. that you yeah. and Lawrence picked it up. Yeah. So, um, does this happen often? Not that I'm aware of, but that's one of the reasons to select and go over it, is to try to pick up stuff like that. Yeah, well... Yeah. Well, it was pointed out by one of the selectmen and the office staff, as far as I know, corrected the problem, so... That's true. Yeah. But I would like, personally, to see it gone over maybe a little more carefully before you guys get it. Okay, uh, I would say that if the selectmen start to notice this problem happen on a slightly more regular basis than I'm aware of it because I think I've been doing this about five years and I remember one possibly two other times when there was a question with the billing in five years so but well, you your, point, hope, your point is well taken right you guys just you know you don't have much time to pull yeah yeah so. right, and then that has been cleared up to a degree I like Lanny came in a little early tonight and had a chance to go over it a little closer and it's one of the things that you know no, that sounds yeah. good right yeah all right so, um, any other public comment? Because there is another meeting starting at 6.30, and I see the chairman of that group anxiously waiting in the corner. So, anything else for the selectmen? Anything from either of my selectmen? First, yes. Lenny, you got that motion in your pocket? I make motion with you, Jim. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. 4.30 on uh, next Tuesday, okay?